Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're looking at a game called The Oracles of Delphi. Now this is a game from a very popular uh, German designer, Stefan Feld. And Jason and I have very different opinions of many of his games, although we agree we both like Bruges. We both like Trajan. We both like um, Castles, of Castles of Burgundy, yes. And like Castles of Burgundy card game. Uh, but there are some of his games I don't like. He does something which I call point salad, which is in the game, you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that, you get points, 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 points. And sometimes I find that a little, meh. Now I don't, sometimes it's fun because I do like getting points, but I'll tell you what, when we played this game, if I had taken the cover off the game and Jason hadn't read the internet at all, and I brought this and set it up and said, this is from a designer, let's play it. And then say who the designer was, I bet you would not have known this was a Stefan Feld game. I wouldn't have. And that, it surprised me because I'm used to games, you know, we, we talk about the other games. I love games like Notre Dame and um, Macau. And there's a lot of other games of his that I really like. And to play a game that is very different than those games is a treat. And yeah, it's essentially a race game. Yes, it's a ra it is a race game. You're racing to take care of all your actions, but with let, dice. Let Tom show you how it's played, and then we can talk about it. You're going to build a board at random at the beginning of the game. It's going to be placed with different pieces. Uh, there's going to be uh, temples on the outside of the board that have these uh, statues of their colors that are built there. Uh, in fact, the whole board has different symbols. These are basically different colored spaces. You can use it where there's a color border on the outside and the symbols fade it in the middle or where the symbol itself is colored. It doesn't matter. Both sides are exactly the same. But you can build this board any way you want. The, the, the book... The rule book shows you a way to build kind of a symmetrical board. Each player is going to start with a ship at one spot, and you're going to have to go out and do things and then get back to this spot. See, each player has their own player board, and on this player board, at the top, they're going to have these tiles here. You have 12 tiles. You can use less if you want the game to be shorter, and you have to accomplish these tiles and eat, like for example, you know, I, need, I need to erect a statue somewhere. Once I do that, it's gone. Here I need to deliver a yellow offering to a yellow temple. Here I need to defeat a black monster, etc. There's just different, uh, uh, a red monster, a monster of any color. Each player is going to be revolving their turn around these dice here. These are the oracle dice. The first thing a player would do on a turn is they'll look at any wound cards they have. There are wound cards. If they have three wound cards of the same color or six wound cards in total, they have to basically skip their turn and discard three of their wound cards. Other than that, though, they are going to then be taking uh, some actions on their turn. Usually you're going to take three actions with the three dice that you have. The colors of the dice matter, but if you don't like the color of a die, you can uh, use favor tokens, spend favor tokens, to move these dice clockwise to turn into the colors that you want. When your turn is over, you are basically going to roll and put those dice on the colors that you have. On one person's turn, they're also going to be rolling this die here, which means you're going to be attacked, and then everyone's going to look where their shield is, and if their shield is less than the number rolled, they will draw another wound card from the wound pile and add it to their wounds. So there's a chance you'll be taking a wound every so many turns. Now, when players are using these dice, they can use any color die to draw a card, a card uh, here essentially is like a die. You can use one of these per turn. So essentially on a future turn, let's say this was on a future turn, I could also have another pink die. So I'd have a pink die plus this. They can also use it to draw two more favor tokens. So you can get rid of any die to get those. Or you can look at some tiles on the board. So there's different tiles on the board with clouds on, and they have different uh, Greek symbols on them. And so you can look at two of the tiles on the board if you want to. You can also use these dice for various things. You can use a die to get rid of all the wounds of that color that you have. You can also use a die to move the god token up on the track over here. Each player has different tokens for the gods, and they'll start with one here, and these tokens will go all the way to the top. Once they get to the top, that token will have a special ability that they can use and then shoot it back to the bottom and start moving it up again. 
When a player's turn is over and they roll their three dice, each other player can look at their god tokens, and if one of the colors that was rolled is not on the bottom row, it was, it's on the first row or higher, they can move that one. So you're always watching what other people roll because it can help you move your tokens up. And these tokens can get rid of all your wounds, they can uh, let you teleport your ship somewhere on the board. There's a, a special ability for each of the different gods. I should also mention that each player also will start the game with a different ship ability. There's different abilities that they have. For example, this one here lets you spend favor tokens and go uh, clockwise around the board. This one here starts you with two extra shield points. This one here gives you an extra two movement. And then they have a certain number of holes in them to show how much your ship can carry. Now, most of what you'll be doing with the dice is maneuvering your ship on the board and doing different actions. And again, it's with the colored dice. So if I'm here, normally my ship can move three spaces so I can use a yellow die and go there. Or I could go here with a yellow die to a yellow space. And so you can move around the board with the different colored dice. You can also pick up an offering for one of the temples if you have the matching color and you're next to it. You can drop it off at that temple if you have the matching color and exit. So if I'm here, I can drop off a green offering at the temple, which is one of the things I, can, I want to do. I can look at one of these tiles when I'm on the board, as long as I have the color that's around the uh, tile border. And then if it's one of the symbols that matches my tile, so I have this tile in front of me, I can put up a structure on there and then I'll, that's again getting rid of one of these. If I don't have that symbol, which is possible, then I'll get a bonus. So for example, this one here would give me four favor tokens. So you can, you're gonna go around the board and be placing these structures up, delivering the different treasures back and forth. You can also fight monsters. Now when you fight a monster, you are going to, essentially you have to beat a monster of strength nine, but you'll subtract your shield from it. So let's say your shield is two. So the monster is a seven. You will then roll a 10-sided die here. And so I need to roll a seven or less. I did not, I rolled a nine, I failed. However, I can spend a favor token to fight the monster again. But now he's one less strength. So now I need a six or less and I roll and I got a five, I got the monster. I'm sorry, that would be a six or greater. And the first roll would have been a success, sorry. So bullet, but if you fail your first roll, then you will redo it for each favor token you spend. So if you have nine favor tokens and no shield, you can guarantee that you'll beat the monster, but eventually you'll roll the die uh, well enough to beat the monster. You're also trying to pick up these statues with your ship, and there are different spots on the board where you can erect these statues and place them there. And so you're just gonna be moving around and trying to maneuver the best that you can. It's essentially a race to be the first person to finish your tiles. So you're again, and, and, and each tile when you complete it gives you reward, maybe it gives you favor tokens. Maybe it gives you one of these equipment cards. Some of these are near the board and players will be able to pick an equipment card. Like this one says, every time I roll a red die uh, at the end of my turn, I'm going to get two favor tokens. This one here is just a permanent ability of plus one. So there's lots of equipment cards. Whenever you defeat a monster, you will get to pick a hero card. And so I can go through these hero cards and some of them increase your shields. Others allow you to use a certain color die as if it was wild, and others let you move your ship an extra three when using that color to move on the board. And there's a certain amount of these, and you just go through the pile and pick these out. The first person to efficiently get their ship back to, uh, to get all these done, and then back to the tile they started from, is the winner. Okay, well first of all, let's talk about how the game looks. I thought it was really cool. It almost looks like it has a theme. Yes. And don't get me wrong, it barely has a theme. <laughs> but, it, but it looks really cool. Yes. But when you, and it's funny because when I think of Stefan Feld, I think of awesome mechanics. And I think of awesome unique mechanics in the game. And he did it again with this game. But he did put on the theme because I really liked how each of your gods, you know, was, you had the different gods, Poseidon. And Ares, okay, and all, all right, I'll like buy that. Ares, all Ares, right. Monsters and Poseidon let you move around the sea. And all the gods' powers felt like the way the gods are. Also, the monsters were very thematic. You know, you had... Well, they're all the Medusa, same, though, when you fight them, though. Okay. You had Medusa and... and but what I'm saying is it, it looks good. When you set this up and put on a table, I was like, oh, wow. I mean, yeah, you got to stick her the pieces. But that just has a cool look to it. And I think that overall, before we get into it extremely, I think this design... This game has proved to me that Mr. Feld has some versatility in his designing. Because I was starting to think, well... 
He's a great designer, but a lot of his stuff is very samey. This is this feels like he just veered off in a, in a different field, and you're like, oh, okay, this is a, uh, this this just is different, and that's good. But all see, this is where we disagree because all those games are different. When, no, when you have the mechanics tell me the difference between Trajan Trajan Bor Bor, almost the same thing. That's two of them, but compared that to Macau, which has completely different manners with the wind roads and the dice for the wind. Ah, okay, I'll buy it, but I, I feel like if you like some of his games, you will tend to like most of them. I don't know that if you are a Feldite, you will necessarily like this, and if you don't like his games, you may like this. I think either way you'll like this. You could be a Feld fan or a non-Feld <laughs> well, fan. Well, not everyone will, will like, like it. This. Okay, well, let's talk about the one thing I think that some people might not like. I liked it, but some people might not, is the fighting the monsters, Okay. When you fight the monster, if you just, let's say turn one, I fight the monster. Okay, so I roll, and I fail. So I pay a thing, I fail, I fail. I could fail like four, I could fail the whole thing. Yes. Um, now, granted, if you have a lot of glory chips, you can really mitigate that. Sure, you might fail the first time, but you should eventually do it. Or if you get any armor, your chances go up. I mean, there's, you can yeah. actually make it, this will happen at a certain point. Um, and some people might not like that. I love it because I love the push your luck aspect. Like, ooh, what am I going to do next? But you, you, gotta, you, you can see how some people might not enjoy see, that. See, I was the opposite because the way I played I waited until Ares was at the top so I could just fight the monster for free. I didn't have to go with the luck of the roll the dice. I waited for the... But I did point out that you had a, a power that helped make that yes, happen more often. I did often. have a power that made that happen more often, but I worked towards that power in the game. I mean, you could just keep bumping Ares every single time you could bump, bump Ares, bump Ares, and then you could fight things for free. You know, and why I said that this game did not feel like a Feld game, you know what? This game actually does feel similar to the same design team that did Marco Polo and that did their games. And and one of the main reasons is that each person starts with a ship, which gives you a unique asymmetrical, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, and and, yeah, asymmetrical Asymmetrical power, power. and they feel very different, and and it's cool. I love that sort of thing. And I thought that was a really neat aspect. That's that may be my favorite part of the game. I thought that was great. And, and well, and also as the game goes by, you can get you get different heroes and different equipment that further makes you different than everyone else. So it's almost like a yes. tech tree in here. Not it's not a tech tree, but it's like you just get special powers throughout the game. Yes, and it felt really cool because at the beginning of the game, they said, "Oh, your power is great," and I said, "No, your power is great." And each power. Yeah, I love when a game does that. When you think everyone else's power is better than yours, then the game's balanced. Yes. <laughs> they, they both looked at me and said, "Well, he's got the power where all his things start, so he can keep moving them up and bumping up his gods." And then I looked at Tom and said, "But you can hold four things on your ship, and you can move both ways around the chart." Now, moving around the chart had a had a. Now that's little, that's very Feldian. That okay, was, that's that's his one thing. That was Castles of Burgundy, like where you have. In Castle Burgundy, if you roll a die into two and you want to get it to a three or a four, you spend some workers here. You spend the um, the lightning bolt things. You spend your lightning bolts so you can move your thing around a big a big circle. And you know if you want to move it from red to yellow, you have to spend two things to turn it from red to yellow. And you're really changing what you can do, but you need to stock up on those. So you have to spend some actions stocking up on your other actions, unless of course you could hit things at the right timing and get the bonuses to get those for free. Yeah, so really there's a lot to like in this game. The moving, the god pieces up, and it's one of those games where once you start playing, you're like, oh, okay, I see, I should be doing this. I like the fact that you're even interested in other people's turns because what they might roll can help you out. But, especially in a four-player game, not so much in two- or three-player, but especially in a four-player game, you really, the game recommends us, hey, you can start planning your turn out during other people's turn. Do that, all right? Because... You have three dice, which gives you three actions. And if you have a card, you can take a fourth action, right? And, so you, and maybe with the guides, like some extra bonus yeah. actions. But you have like three to five actions a turn, about. Well, that can be a lot of planning to do. So again, the game will really drag down if you wait till your turn to start planning these out. Yes, what other people can do will affect you slightly. But for the most part, you can plan out most of your turn beforehand. Yes, they might grab a resource that you want it. Yes, they might do something else that changes your mind, but for the most part, you can plan out. So you want to make sure you do that because I think the game could drag down if you didn't. Yeah, I mean, it's easy It's easy to plan out. You only have three dice, and the dice work in that cool mechanic of the colors where the colors mean something, which, again, harkens back to Castles of Burgundy where you have to use the correct numbers to to ship your goods or to... You're right, okay. So, this is far, so this, The more we talk about this game does feel a little bit more fail the end to me. Yes, even though the the points are very different because it's a ra- you're racing to get to achieve your goals and get back to the end. Right, it's just a race, first person air wins, bam. Yes. So 
in that regard, it's it's different than a lot of his games, but he did use a lot of his mechanics, which I think are great. I, I love the way the dice change colors. And you really want to, you know, if you could use a die and land in a C space where you can do actions on both sides, like on one side I could explore and on the other side I could pick up a, a cube, you can do multiple actions from the C, single C space and not have to travel the C as many times. But it's really tricky because you need, you need to spend those lightning bolts to change your color to the right colors to get where you want to get to. And it's there's some tough choices in this game. But I love the racing aspect. I love each time you complete a goal, you get a bonus action for completing the goal. So you want to try to do the goals as quickly as you can to keep getting those bonus actions, to keep powering yourself up, to go forward and go forward and go forward until you eventually get all 12 of them done. Yeah. So so uh, what's your awesomeness rating for this? This one, I liked it a lot. I rated up there with some of his higher games. I really like it, and I give it an awesomeness rating of an 8. Okay. Well, I'm going to differentiate from you by also giving it an 8. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so really, I kind of, I'll be honest, I didn't i didn't know what to think going on. I was like, all right, Feld, we'll see what it's like. Oh, I hear it's different than his other Felds. Well, we'll see. My first reaction putting out was like, well, this looks really cool. And it has that variable setup board, which you're like, eh. But you know what? That is kind of cool. Every game is going to feel different because these statues might be different than other people. You know, sometimes it's, everything's close together in certain spots. It could be very far apart. But I have that warping power where I can jump all the way across the board if I use... You know, the god powers will change based on the game. It has this whole... Feld likes to put in a thing where you get hit by stuff in games like fires and rats and things like that, right? Yeah. And in this game, it's the the monsters hitting you and things. But that's not bad, right? That's not a bad thing in this one. It's something that you see coming, and if you don't... If you ignore it, it's, it's problematic, but you can... So you have to spend some... It's those... The uh, injuries, the whatever they call the injuries, when you roll that black die and you get all those injuries, then you got to eventually clear out your injuries, or else you're going to lose a turn while you heal yourself. Yeah, so I, I I find that that's not a bad thing, and like I said, the game keeps moving pretty well. Scale's pretty cool, so I'm very impressed. The next time I hear Stefan Feld designing a game, I'm going to go into it with much more confidence because. He's coming around. I always go into it games with confidence because Feld is a genius and he did it again. I love Feld. Okay. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.